ask and you shall receive. You all wanted it, so today you're going to get it. Today I'm going to cover Maltex and the Stable Salt Reactor, their innovative approach, their strategy to tackling nuclear waste, and their solution to providing stable backup power for renewables already on the grid. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hello again and welcome to Rock Logic. I am your host, Sean Kenny, and today I get the chance to fulfill a much requested topic that has been popping up on our comment section. You all asked me to talk about Multex and the Stable Salt Reactor, or SSR for short, so today we're going to make it happen. To be honest, I wasn't sure what all the fuss was all about, but then again, Multex was one of those companies that I've done little research on. But after taking a closer look, I can see the appeal, not just the technology, but their approach and the progress made up to this point. Uh, they're even developing a novel solution in aiding partners in the renewable energy space. Multex was founded in 2014 in the UK with the intention to use molten salt reactor technology as a means to achieve the following. Reducing nuclear waste stockpiles, reducing global emissions, reducing both the capital and operational costs, and implementing intrinsic safety systems. Now, a lot of these can be achieved from the various molten salt reactor designs that I've gone over on this show, but the stable salt reactor has some merits that take full advantage of convection and fluid dynamics that weren't even considered for the molten salt reactor experiment. In a stable salt reactor, heat is generated when nuclear fission takes place in metal pins filled with molten salt fuel. The heat is then transferred to a primary salt coolant where it circulates through heat exchangers and passes to a secondary salt coolant which sends the heat to storage tanks. The heat can then be used to produce electricity, hydrogen, and other industrial processes. The idea of using metal fuel pins was considered for the aircraft reactor experiment in the 1950s. However, it was rejected because convection of fluids was considered to be unreliable in an aircraft. However, convection is essential for heat transfer of unpumped fluids. The idea was never revisited until Maltex was founded and decided to pursue the approach for ground-based operations. Another design feature of the reactor is that its core is rectangular in shape. This is uh, neutronically inefficient compared to a cylindrical core, but it allows for simpler movement of fuel assemblies. Power output can be increased by simply adding additional modules. Now, Multex plans on developing three different types of reactors using this approach. The SSRW, which is a fast spectrum reactor that will be designed to burn plutonium as well as spent nuclear waste as fuel. The SSRU, which is a thermal spectrum reactor that will be powered on low enriched uranium. And the SSRTH, which can run on thorium fuel. In addition to these reactors, Multex is developing a thermal storage system that will use excess process heat as energy storage for renewables. These will actually be working in tandem with one another, so instead of running gas turbines as backup power for when the sun doesn't shine or the wind doesn't blow, the grid reserve system can run stored power for about eight hours, enough for peak loads or until the renewables can come back online. Clearly, the company has a long-term strategy to develop and evolve the design to operate under various fuel cycles. They plan on maximizing power output with additional fuel storage, and in terms of cost, they plan on coming to market at a price of about $1,950 per kilowatt. That's about a fraction of the cost of conventional nuclear and even cheaper than coal or combined cycle gas power stations. So I understand why you guys get excited about it, but here's why I get excited. In addition to this design being fully patented, Multex is currently undergoing a vendor design review with the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. They've already completed submission for Phase 1 and will soon be moving towards Phase 2 before being able to apply for commercial licenses. This year, the Multex SSRW was selected as one of two small modular reactor candidates by New Brunswick Power out of a field of about 90 candidates. The plan is for Multex to build a demonstration stable salt reactor at the Point La Pro nuclear power site in Canada under an agreement with the New Brunswick Energy Solutions Corporation and NB Power. They're on track to having an operational reactor by 2030, and when it's built, it'll be designed to consume nuclear waste on site, as well as provide a additional energy storage for renewables. This is all just in Canada, by the way. In the UK, they've been receiving several grants from advanced reactor development programs. In the US, they've received additional funding from the DOE's ARPA-E to the tune of $2.5 million in July of 2019, and a second round of $4.5 million in May of 2020. 
So as far as nuclear startups go, Maltex is doing very well. They are patented, well-funded, and are engaged in overseas partnerships to ensure a quick path to commercial rollout of their technology. They're evolving their design of their reactors to run on multiple fuel cycles. They are addressing the nuclear waste problem, which is a major political issue in multiple countries. And they are creating synergies with renewable industries by maximizing the efficiency of their reactor design. Now, I have my own opinion about renewables, but the way I see it is if you're pushing for technology to burn up waste as fuel, if you use process heat to store additional energy for grid backup, and if you do it in such a way where it can run efficiently 24-7, 365, then yes, you can run 100% zero carbon energy. You can make the case for renewables to be a real player in this space. So Moltex is planning to do almost everything that I've been advocating on this show, and for that, I salute you guys. But alas, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank everyone for helping this channel grow to where it is today. We also quietly added a donation link a few weeks ago, and I want to give a huge thank you to those who've donated. We promise that we're setting it all aside to upgrade our equipment, including a higher quality camera, background, and teleprompter, so you all can see my beautiful face in 4K. If you're a first time viewer, please subscribe, and if you like this episode, click the like button if you're so inclined. The team here at RockLogic will be taking a brief hiatus for the holiday season, but we plan on being back with more content early next year. For now, I want to wish everyone a happy holidays. I'm Sean Kenny. This is RockLogic. Hey, thank you so much for uh, watching today's episode. Uh, we're a new podcast, so we really appreciate if you like this video and subscribe to it. My producer, Jessica, says that I'll get a cookie uh, for every new subscriber we get. Maybe if I'm good enough, she'll let me outside. Is that good? Yeah, all right. Hmm. That's good. That's a good cooking.